Welcome to Law Day 2020. For the past 30 years, the Court of Appeals has been honored to co-host the annual Law Day ceremony with the Attorney General for the State of New York. And this year, we are pleased to continue our tradition, albeit in a very different way. As you know, around the country, countless public events have been canceled or postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. And while it is very disappointing that this year we're not able to gather in person at beautiful Court of Appeals Hall to commemorate Law Day, we couldn't quite let go of this wonderful annual event. So after speaking with our Attorney General, Letitia James, and our State Bar President, Hank Greenberg, we agreed without hesitation that Law Day had to be celebrated. Our message to the public, particularly this year, must be clear and unwavering. Our justice system remains strong and resilient. Our respective institutions are working together to ensure access to justice, and we are supporting and upholding the rule of law, standing together against the disruption of the moment. And so while disappointed by the physical distance between us, we are delighted and proud to continue our annual tradition. And as part of our tradition, we begin Law Day ceremony with our Pledge of Allegiance. And to lead us in reciting the pledge this year, we've invited one of our outstanding court professionals, Regan Williams, a senior court clerk assigned to the New York City Criminal Court in Lower Manhattan. Regan has continued reporting to work every day, along with so many of her dedicated colleagues across the state, to provide essential support for our virtual court parts, and it is because of folks like Regan that we are able to deliver justice safely and effectively in the midst of this pandemic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Regan. And now to lead us in our national anthem, we've invited New York State Court Officer Sergeant Jessica Hernandez from Bronx Supreme Court Criminal Term. Sergeant Hernandez and her uniformed colleagues around the state have put themselves at great risk during this public health crisis, serving on our front line so that we can keep our courts open to serve the public and carry out our constitutional mission. Sergeant. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn? early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Parts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets reckless, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the
Thank you, Sergeant Hernandez. Each year, the American Bar Association selects a theme for Law Day events around the country. This year's theme, Your Vote, Your Voice, Our Democracy, the 19th Amendment at 100, the theme invites us to reflect on the historic contributions of the pioneering suffragettes, women like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, who started a movement for equality and justice beginning right here in our own state with the 1848 Seneca Falls Women's Rights Convention, which ultimately led to the 19th Amendment, granting women the right to vote. While the pioneers of women's suffrage would certainly be pleased with the progress of women in American society and the record number of women, 131, serving in the current Congress, and here in New York State where women in the judiciary now make up 42% of our bench, they would undoubtedly be surprised and even disappointed at the woeful lack of civic knowledge and understanding of our electorate and at the low voter turnout we experience year after year across our nation. Last year on Law Day, President Greenberg and I pledged to hold a joint convocation, a convocation designed to harness the power of the legal profession to work with educators on strengthening civic knowledge and engagement among our young people. The idea of engaging students was overwhelmingly well received and the planning began. But of course, the 2020 convocation was not to be. The COVID-19 emergency forced us to postpone the convocation, but I assure you that as soon as it is safe and practicable for us to do so, we will fulfill our commitment and implement our planned program to have lawyers and judges collaborating with local educators across the state to engage our students on civics and to improve their understanding of the courts, the justice system, the rule of law, and the power we have as voters to guide our own destiny. The infiltration of this hideous virus into every aspect of our lives has, I believe, for all of us, underscored the importance of voter knowledge and participation in shaping our country's future and our destiny. Our upcoming elections will be critical to the nation's future. We will be called upon to elect competent national and local leaders who will be charged with guiding our recovery and implementing the safe, smart, and effective policies necessary to restart our stalled economy and prevent future outbreaks. As important, we must also make sure that no American is disenfranchised by the pandemic and that every person is able to safely cast their vote. And the legal profession will surely have an important role to play in ensuring that our election laws and rules are updated that our election systems are prepared to count every vote, and that our elections are free from outside interference. And of course, our courts will be open and working to peacefully settle disputes and faithfully interpret and apply our laws and our Constitution. As members of the bar, we each swore an oath to uphold the Constitution, and we understand well that we are the guardians of our democracy and that it is up to us to lead the way in preserving and defending our cherished right to vote, in helping New Yorkers recover from the economic damage of this devastating virus, and that we must work collaboratively across all sectors of the bar and among our many and diverse justice partners to keep our courts open while protecting the health and safety of our judges, court staff, lawyers, litigants, and the tens of thousands of individuals who, until the recent past, have physically come through our courthouses every single day and whose legal needs are sure to intensify in the aftermath of this crisis. And while this may be a law day unlike any other in our history, 
our constitutional mission is unchanged. It remains constant. It is now more important than ever that we continue providing access to justice and that we continue to uphold the rule of law for the benefit of every American. And so on this Singular Law Day 2020, I want to thank everyone who has done their part. Everyone who's done their part to help us keep our courts up and running. Everyone who has done their part to provide legal services to individuals in need. Everyone who has done their part to stand in defense of the legal and constitutional rights enjoyed by all of us. And everyone who has done their part to help and support each other as we work together as New Yorkers to get our state and our nation moving forward to a new normal. So on behalf of the entire New York State Unified Court System, we thank you and express our deep and abiding gratitude for your effort and for your service. Now, the judiciary, of course, is not the only institution charged with protecting rights and upholding the rule of law. The Attorney General for the State of New York, Letitia James, our state's chief legal officer, has been hard at work throughout this pandemic, advising our state government on difficult public health issues, enforcing consumer protection and labor laws, and serving as the guardian of the legal rights of all New Yorkers. It is with great pleasure that I welcome Attorney General James to our virtual Law Day ceremony. Thank you, Judge D. Fiore, for giving me this opportunity to join with you, State Bar President Hank Greenberg, and the dedicated members of New York's legal community for this very special Law Day celebration. Judge D. Fiore and her team have done a remarkable job of keeping our court system in the wheels of justice running during this difficult time. You have successfully transitioned to a largely virtual court system during the coronavirus pandemic, but there is nothing virtual about the actual, real life, high quality justice you continue to deliver for the people of our great state. And I know that none of this would be possible without the extraordinary efforts of Chief Administrative Judge Larry Marks. Thank you for all what can only be described as a phenomenal team effort. I've never been more proud to be your colleague and partner. On Law Day, we come together to celebrate and explore the rule of law, the set of guidelines that allow us to navigate our country and our people through times of turbulence and triumph, of right and wrong, progress and peril. We have a higher responsibility than ever in these challenging times to ensure that the rule of law and the rights and dignity of the people we serve do not become casualties of the war against the pandemic. That is why my office is taking aggressive action to prevent scammers and price gougers from profiting off the fears of our neighbors and debt collectors from coming between hard pressed New York families and their stimulus checks. And it is why in the midst of this pandemic, I remain committed to protecting the rights the health and safety of all New Yorkers, including the health care and reproductive rights of women and those vulnerable individuals in our nursing homes. This is both a legal and a moral imperative. As former United States Attorney General Bobby Kennedy once said, the glory of justice and the majesty of law are created not just by the Constitution, nor by the courts, nor by the offices of the law, nor by the lawyers, but by the men and women who constitute our society, who are the protectors of the law, as they are themselves protected by the law. At this critical moment, without the processes of our legal system, ensuring that it functions properly and fairly, our democracy, my friends, would be lost. Today, we come together to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the conquering of a terrible injustice, and to celebrate a century of women achieving the right to vote. This is a day of celebration, and it is also a day of rededication. 
And while women won the right to vote 100 years ago, let's not forget that women of color had, the, had to fight longer and harder for that right than anyone. And all women are still fighting for full equality, equal pay, and our rightful place at the seats of power in this nation. Even with record numbers of women in Congress and in statewide elected position, there remain glaring gender gaps that are impeding the advancement of women and inhibiting the progress of our nation. I stand with sisters and brothers here in New York and across the nation who demand a society that treats women as equals in every way. The fact is, as we approach the 2020 election, too many Americans, women and men, are still fighting for the unfettered right to vote. It is an American tragedy that 100 years after the passage of the 19th Amendment, 56 years after the passage of the Civil Rights Act, and 55 years after Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law, we face renewed attempts to deny the basic right to vote, especially in communities of color. And that is why we must prepare for the 2020 election with the largest education, mobilization, and voter protection campaign in modern history. The stakes of the 2020 election are higher than they have been in half a century, and so too are the threats of voter suppression and the need for voter protection. In fact, voter ID laws and voter suppression have become the new poll taxes. Redlining is being replaced by deed theft. And all over this country, millions of American women are paid less for the same work and are forced to defend the right to control their own bodies. Unfortunately, New York State is not immune from many of these attacks. And that is why my office has taken aggressive actions to protect voters. These include the establishment of an Election Day hotline, staffed by attorneys in my office, to troubleshoot and resolve a range of issues encountered by voters at their poll sites. We are also committed to the enforcement of new voter reforms recently passed by the state legislature and signed into law by the governor. Your presence here today is one more sign of New York's commitment to increase voter turnout and to make it easier for people to cast their ballots. We must do everything in our power to ensure that every voter counts and every vote is counted. Women have always been in the forefront of this fight, from the courageous efforts of Elizabeth Candy Staten and Susan B. Anthony, to the powerful voices of women of color like Mary Church Terrell and Harriet Tubman and Mary McLeod Bethune. Although it is true that women have always been powerful and indispensable leaders in every aspect of society, for too long our lights have been hidden, marginalized, or ignored but that is changing. Thanks to a global women's rights movement and the new paths being blazed by a growing number of successful women, we are emerging from the shadows and letting our women power shine. At moments like this, when the very fabric of who we are as a nation and what we believe in is challenged, it is perhaps wise to be reminded that legal protections for the right to vote are enshrined in America's founding document. And while women and African-Americans were originally excluded from that right, I am reminded of the words of one of my sheroes, former Texas Congress member, Barbara Jordan. She once said of the preamble to the Constitution, we the people, it is a very eloquent beginning. But when the document was completed on the 17th of September in 1787, I was not included in that we the people. If Barbara wasn't in the Constitution when it was written, she made sure that once she got in, she stayed in all the way, and every American woman must do the same. We must ensure that protections are fought and died for, remain firm and cemented in law. We are engaged in this struggle, not because we wish to be contrarian. We are doing it because our moral compass dictates us to do it. We are doing it because we have an obligation to ensure the basic freedoms of our country. We are doing it because even if our founders only got it half right, they knew that the right to vote was fundamental to a free society. And as we reflect today on the essential role that voting plays in ensuring a free society, I hope that you will keep in mind our obligations as lawyers and officers of the court to uphold the rule of law 
and safeguard our democracy. The voices and votes of women are need now more than ever before. Sojourner Truth may have said it best in her 1851 speech before the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. Women and men of the legal profession, we must do our part. Together, committed to the dignity and equality of all, I know we will turn this nation right side up again. That is our mission, and this is our moment. Thank you, and be safe. Thank you, Attorney General James. Our next speaker has done an absolutely extraordinary job representing the New York State Bar Association as its president and responding to a most challenging call to service. This president, on behalf of his members, has set in motion an amazing pro bono response designed to assist more than a million unemployed and vulnerable New Yorkers suffering from the economic fallout of the pandemic. And along a parallel track, he has worked so effectively to position the association to provide struggling lawyers and law firms with comprehensive coronavirus resources to help them and their clients get through this unsettling time. It is my privilege to introduce our State Bar President, Hank Greenberg. Law Day is America's annual celebration of the rule of law. Each year on this day, we recommit ourselves to remaining a nation guided by law and justice. The importance of that exercise has never been greater than now. The global pandemic that has upended our lives has placed unprecedented strain on the institutions that has kept us a free people for more than two centuries. It is fitting that this year's Law Day theme is your vote, your voice, our democracy, the 19th Amendment at 100. That transformative constitutional amendment guaranteed all women the right to vote. It was the largest simultaneous enfranchisement in American history. The journey to that watershed event began in upstate New York at the Seneca Falls Convention of 1848. And over the next 72 years, New Yorkers led the fight for universal women's suffrage, culminating in the 19th Amendment's ratification in 1920. Leadership is the glory of New York State. It is our tradition. It is our legacy. It was here in New York at the Stonewall Inn that the fight to lead LGBTQ civil rights was transformed into a national movement. All constitutional rights are important, but the right to vote is the most precious right because it is the right preservative of all other rights. Without the franchise, even our most basic rights would be illusory. When voters cast a ballot, they affirm principles of self-governance and freedom. While we in New York hold dear the right to vote, that is not the case everywhere. In some states, a voter suppression crisis exists because of voter identification laws, reduced voting opportunities, and gerrymandering. Such measures often result in the disenfranchisement of eligible voters, especially the poor and racial minorities. At this moment, however, the greatest immediate threat to voting rights is not man-made, it is the pandemic. Our voting laws and systems were not designed to conduct elections in the midst of public health crises. But we can take comfort in the knowledge that America has previously overcome epic crises. We have been here before. During the Civil War, when America was in the throes of the bloodiest conflict in our history, President Abraham Lincoln was determined to proceed with the election of 1864. It was the election that would decide his fate in the White House, and he feared defeat. Nevertheless, Lincoln believed the election was a necessity. He explained to the American people, we cannot have free government without elections. 
And if the rebellion could force us to forego or postpone a national election, it might fairly claim to have already conquered and ruined us, he said. That moment in history, when America was so deeply divided, arguably provided a compelling case for postponing the election. But our 16th president would have none of it. He understood that elections are America's foundational concept, the means by which we govern ourselves freely. Today, we face another war, this time against an invisible foe. And the resultant disruptions to the electoral process have already been felt. 15 states, including New York, have postponed primary elections. And a growing number are moving to reduce health risks to both voters and poll workers by expanding vote-by-mail options. Even as our efforts to flatten the curve bear fruit, in-person voting continues to pose not only public health, but also logistical problems. One is whether a sufficient number of poll workers will be available to monitor polling sites. Another is that many polling sites or buildings that are now closed are restricted for use, such as schools, houses of worship, and nursing homes. Voters must not have to choose between disease or democracy, between risking their health or exercising a civic duty. Our state legislature, after several members tested positive for COVID-19, changed its own rules to allow for remote voting so too lawmakers can and should take steps to ensure that all of us can vote safely and securely this November. If New York's response to the crisis has proven anything, it is that we are strong, we are innovative, and we are determined in the face of adversity. As we struggle with fear and uncertainty, this much is clear. Giving up on democracy is not an option. We will meet this challenge. From Seneca Falls to Stonewall, New York has fought for and defended fundamental rights like the right to vote. It is who we are. It is what we do. We are New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, President Greenberg. Ordinarily, we would now proceed to the awards portion of our Law Day ceremony with Chief Administrative Judge Larry Marks publicly recognizing the members of our professional staff who have gone above and beyond the call of duty during the course of the year and made notable contributions to the courts and our communities. And while we're not able to conduct our awards presentation this year, I do want to take this opportunity to express our special appreciation and praise for the extraordinary work of our non-judicial staff, including the chief clerks, court clerks, court officers, technology staff, and many other dedicated court professionals who worked countless hours under very difficult conditions to create a virtual court system almost overnight, a system that has enabled us to deliver justice services all across the state without putting the public or our judges or staff at risk of harm. And a special word of thanks goes out to our administrative, supervising, and trial judges for their leadership and excellent work in adopting and implementing the virtual court model that is delivering justice safely and effectively. And also to our presiding justices and their colleagues on the appellate division, as well as my colleagues at the Court of Appeals, for quickly following suit and adopting virtual operations to ensure the continuity of our vital services. Finally, we owe a great debt of gratitude to our Chief Administrative Judge Larry Marks for leading our day-to-day -day operations and guiding our court system through this very challenging period. Judge Marks has performed his responsibilities with a steadiness of purpose and a degree of competence and optimism that has been inspiring to watch. Thank you, Judge Marks. And thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this year's Virtual Law Day, and thank you for all that you are doing on a daily basis to keep our justice system strong and resilient. 
Together, we will continue to preserve our democratic values and demonstrate to the world that our commitment to the rule of law is unshakable. So until we next convene, hopefully in person at Court of Appeals Hall for our Law Day 2021, please take care, be well, and remain disciplined in keeping yourself and all those around you safe. Thank you.